and welcome to the Cardano Artist Corner podcast. Uh, if you'd like to support the program, you can delegate to Cardano Stakepool Hotel. So today on the Cardano Artist Corner podcast, we have the privilege of meeting Gines Serantagan. And Gines is one of the most important contemporary artists alive. So we start off this episode with uh, Gines showing around his gallery, and then we sit down for the interview. So uh, let's go and meet Gines. Yeah, these are like the lions and uh, yes, um, and some horse. I guess that you can can see them, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see them. I'm I'm already recording yeah, it. That's, is, uh, that's great. Yeah, this is the entrance of the gallery, and uh, mm-hmm. and this is from where I'm talking to you. And then inside the gallery, I have uh, mm-hmm. this uh, big heart. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah, and then some uh, some works around, and uh, they have like four rooms here. Then we have mm-hmm. the gallery director here, Gala. Right, and, and Gala. this is your this is your private and, gallery. Hello. Yes, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, Amazing. And then uh, then this is some some paintings here. We have some Picasso here, some lithographs mm-hmm. of Picasso, mm-hmm. and then this one is another one, and. Uh, and then this is, a, you can see the, the horses from the back. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And these are like a puma, they're like mountain lion. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, and then we have another room here, which I'm going just to sit down and talk to you. But mm-hmm. this is the other room where I'm going to be with you talking. Mm-hmm. And this is the, this is the, uh, the thinker. It's called the thinker. Mm-hmm. It's Plato. And uh, there are a lot of books with, uh, with uh, paintings hanging, this is a, a boat, and yes. and that's a, a poet called Walt Whitman, the American poet. Yeah, Walt Whitman. Uh, and then here I have a kind of my office here. Still, mm-hmm. is um, have to organize a little bit here, but this is my mm-hmm. my little corner where I come. We are writing now a book about my crazy life. I mean, you're not not only an, an artist, but you're also an anthropologist, right? Originally. So, yes. what made you go around the world? Was it your interest in anthropology or your interest in art or, or a mix or? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I was born an artist. Since I was a kid, I was a child, I started painting. And uh, mm. um, my father told me, uh, don't study art because they're going to change your talent, you know, in a way that you, you you are going to be exposed to copy artists and things like that. Uh, find uh, your language by yourself and, uh, and then do something that you really like. I, I always love to travel and, yeah. uh, and then uh, study the behavior of other people. And, uh, and then I went to New York and I studied in NYU, New York University. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I graduated in anthropology and archaeology. And that allowed me to work uh, in Africa, so. Asia, uh, Australia, and uh, Europe, of course, in America. And, uh, and I, I, I got very much interested in the American Indians. Mm-hmm. So I work uh, very much with them. And, and that influenced my life as an artist too. Little by little, art was taking over my my life and then i'm completely right, okay. dedicated to the arts but but definitely anthropology was a big help that's, that's actually really interesting because you're already answering uh, two of my other questions because the the, the <laughs> one question was uh, like which period of your life would you think was the most important one in the anthrop- anthropological uh, sense so maybe this is what your, was your time with the north american uh, natives no maybe Yes, I think so. There was a moment of my life in uh, in the late '60s uh, under Franco's regime, a dictator that we have in Spain, mm. where I practically escaped uh, every summer after school, hitchhiking in Europe and uh, living in Paris, in Rome, and in uh, Athens, or going to a kibbutz in Israel and. Mm-hmm. Uh, being in the United States, in New York, or in Canada, in early 70s. And then, uh, so all that, the, all that time, uh, 
I was really, uh, it was a very prolific uh, time of uh, my life, traveling and, and, and discovering new things in the world that mm-hmm. I couldn't have a chance in my in my country, in my home country. And oh, okay. then uh, in 1971, I, I, I settled down in New York after being with the American Indians in Canada. And, and then I started studying in anthropology and uh, and I I was also again I I, I started writing and I wrote a number of books and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, manuscripts and uh, and and articles and I I became also very interested in the human side and and of the American the natives uh, and I and and their their life with them I really influenced in my artwork but then I was how much time did um, you spend with enough, them? Um, I spent in and out like around 20 years, uh, even though I had a base in New York. Yeah. Then uh, I, I was adopted by the American Indians too in 1992 by, mm-hmm. by the chief of the Sioux Indians, who was yeah. the, the leader of the American Indian movement. Mm-hmm. And then he became an actor. He did Last of the Mohicans and other movies. Yes, in, and, in Dakota, no? South Dakota, North yeah, Dakota. South Dakota, yeah. South Dakota, yeah. Mm-hmm. But definitely that, my my experience with the Indians, which is uh, the decades of the 70s and 80s, uh, was a very much uh, a big influence in my life. Mm-hmm. And then um, in 1980, I, I had an exhibition at the Guggenheim. I was, I was, I was uh, lucky to, to get inside the, the, the museum and that opened the doors for my artwork. Uh, and then I started exhibiting uh, in different um, museums and galleries. Um, till today, we had over 200 exhibitions in, um, mm-hmm. in 25 countries around so the, the world. So, 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 so the but, Guggenheim but sort of opened many doors for you. Uh, yes, because the exhibition that we had, we, we were 10 young uh, Spanish artists that were mm. selected Guggenheim called uh, New Images of Spain. Uh, I was the youngest of all of them. And then that exhibition traveled for two years in different museums. And then then, then what I did from, from New York was uh, I start traveling also mostly in Asia. And I went to India and I started Painting in uh, Japan, in China, in Philippines, in Indonesia, in Hong Kong, Thailand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, mm-hmm. and and then uh, I expanded myself in in Asia. I left in Australia. I married an Australian girl, ah. and uh, and then then I I, I I was going to ask this because on your in your biography it didn't say anything about uh, romantic relationships, and I was wondering <laughs> if you were always on your own, you know, or if you if you met somebody or. Well, I married three times, one in, uh, in New York when I was very young with an oh. American girl. Then I married a Korean girl and, oh. then, uh, and then I married Australian oh. and then I have, a, I have a daughter and I have a son. Oh, wow. uh, and then they work with me now. My son, my daughter, is a, uh, he, she studied architecture and she studied graphic design and she... Oh, wow design my projects and then and then my son is an artist yes and well she was born in new york and my son in california mm-hmm. but now they are in marbella with me mm-hmm. and uh, we travel mm-hmm. around a lot we are we travel around the world uh, i can say that the world is my house you created your art in many different uh, different countries no and you met many many different people so do you feel that uh, when you are creating art in one in one country that your art developed in a certain direction. And do you have any example of that, for example? Yes, definitely. Uh, if I'm in New York, my paintings becomes uh, very strong. Uh, I use black and white, I use the brown, I use the co- color that they have to do with the, with the industry, the, the urban city. If I'm in Japan, the, it becomes very, um, uh, like dark blues and the, and the, the greens of the Japanese uh, feelings. You know, if I'm in China, the, mm. the color is very red and yellows. Uh, or if I'm here in Marbella, it becomes very white and light blues. So I, the, the, oh, my, feelings, uh, I, I, my feelings are, are expressed in my, in my canvas, in my sculptures. Also, the, the topic, the theme, 
uh, is uh, really adapting to, to, in that way, I think that I'm very much influenced by anthropology, that wherever I am, I'm, uh, I'm uh, expressing the feelings of the place. Yes, yeah. that's interesting. I wasn't anticipating that answer because I was more referring to, uh, to your technique. But I mean, you're telling me about your uh, the, the theme and your mood, you know, that's, uh, that's super interesting yeah. that, that when you're an artist in a different location that it brings out uh, different, different feelings and different emotions. That's, uh, that's very yes, uh, the technique is similar, mm. but then the colors are different because the color becomes uh, like a kind of uh, a diary, uh, whatever you are, right. the emotions. Uh, you express them with different colors. Hmm. I have a, like a little theory about color uh, that I experimented out of my travelings, and uh, and my theory is that as the, to me uh, is born from from the dark, from the shadows, and and then and then and and uh, and the and the shadows, uh, the col the black color is born from the absence. Of color, and which which I mean is that uh, in Japan I was painting, and I, I realized that due to the humidity of the country, it was very difficult for the paintings to dry. And uh, I I start experimenting um, uh, painting uh, canvases with lots of colors, and leave them in areas where there is no light. I like uh, practically. Uh, closed doors in the studio or under a closet, so just to experiment the intensity of color. And when you, when you don't expose colors to light, the colors are amazing. The effect of colors are amazing. Uh, however, when you paint with a lot of colors, but you expose those colors to the sun, the sun practically burned the color yes, and uh, and and something something like that i came up with uh, with what happened with to us as humans uh, as we go to the northern part of the globe uh, scandinavian countries where there is not much light yes you can see people who are with blonde color blonde hair blue eyes as you go to the south uh, there is no blue eyes, no greens, no blonde. The, uh, the hair is, is black, the, the, the eyes are black. Mm -hmm. It's the intensity of, of the sun light that is really uh, create this absence of color. Following your, your question, um, emotions definitely are important to express in different situations of your life uh in a painting and uh um in the art world at least to me um i say sometimes that to be able to to create life in a painting or in a sculpture you have to die mm. for an instant mm. but you have to die. Mm. so you you put all these emotions in the painting and and you give life to the painting to of the painting, this culture, right. yeah. and you die for an instant, and mm -hmm. you, you you die, of course, to continue creating more. But it's a, it's an instant death, and uh, and um, and this is the way I I feel the art is is a is a rebirth, and is a, the like process a of is a create the creation is that you die in a way to you, to. Mm -hmm to give life and you are born a, again in the in, in your in your artwork that's right hmm. it's uh it's i think it's like a woman's birth you know hmm. that you you in a in a in a way you yeah. you die in a need to 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 give birth and uh right. and i think i think that is um um uh, this is a this is a completely a dedication and and with with the uh, with the creative process yeah i have uh, questions about uh, three of your pieces the first one is called uh, xian horse and it was made in china yes. what was the inspiration is there a story with that one to tell or is that one that is like look like broken i didn't notice it to be broken it's it's like on a red it's a red horse or on a red on a, or on a red background 
Oh yes, and then I think that that horse has to do with the with Xi'an, which is uh, one of the oldest cities of China. Mm. I keep a, a studio in China till today for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. where I go from time to time, and I'm supposed to be in June again. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely China has been a big influence to me. Mm -hmm. um, and this, uh, this, this young horse has to do with, uh, with, the, with the soldiers, the warriors that, that they were uh, discovered in Xi'an. And, that, and they, when they die, they, they die with the horses, uh, together with the horses. Uh, uh, and uh, the figure of the horse has been always very important for me in my art. Yes, because you have a, you have a collection of, uh, of horses, I noticed. The second one I would like to ask you about is the, the Jesus of Peace statue in, uh, in Manila, which is uh, the largest uh, Jesus in the, in the world now. So very, very, how, how did that come about? And, and what's it like to create something so, uh, so immense, so huge, very different from, from painting and like a very delicate uh, painting, no? So. Yes, the, it's, it's still, it's still, it's still is going on, the project. It's not finished yet. Oh, ah. And it's, a, it's not finished yet. It's, a, it's, a, it's an sculpture 100 meters high. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be the, it's, it's higher than the Statue of Liberty. It's going to be higher than Statue wow. of Liberty. And it's three, three times the size, three times the size of the Christ of Brazil. Brazil and, yes. uh, I've seen so that you, one. Yeah, you can walk. Yeah, this is three times bigger. Wow, <laughs> but you can walk, you can walk under the Jesus, and then you can. Uh, um, and there is inside like a roof where with the structure of the cells, which is the origin of life, and uh -huh. then the idea of this capture is uh, to create like a like a like a center for a pilgrimage center for peace, so right, okay. that people can. People can get around and mm. and and discuss and talk and feel peace and uh, mm. and it's a it's a center for peace. When 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 do you anticipate it to be uh, finished? I I we we thinking that it will be finished by the twenty three twenty four. Oh, uh, so the, uh, fairly fairly yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. hope, hopefully. Uh, I guess, and then when it's finished, you will go to the Philippines. Now, I guess you will go to Man to Manila and to celebrate. Def definitely. <laughs> mm -hmm, nice. um, number three. I have another monument. Last year, we inaugurated a monument in uh, in Philippines to Manila uh, called the Emperador, and uh, it's like an arch with. Uh, it looks like the Brandenburg Gate with uh, yeah. with nine sculptures. It's twenty three meters high. As well. and, and also in the United States. Yeah, in the United States, we opened, I, I inaugurated in January last year, uh, three big sculptures in, in Kentucky on the high Ohio River. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, dedicated to mythology and other issues, mm -hmm. uh, some abstract work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last one I was wanted to talk about is from uh, your home country. It's called uh, Butterfly. But butterfly, and I think you made this in your studio, you know, in in Grazalema. In... Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there? Any... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the the idea of the butterfly is that I think that the the title of that painting called uh, "You Are Like a Butterfly," meaning that mm -hmm. uh, beauty beauty is such a an ephemeral thing that it lasts so 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 little, mm -hmm. like a butterfly. I, I can be beautiful, but uh, it lasts so just just few few days. It's a, a moment, yeah. It, yeah, it's a short moment, but it, it created an enormous impact on you. You know, in your life, mm -hmm. it's beauty. Beauty goes, and uh, and it's like a metaphor of mm -hmm. of what it is a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing in our life. Mm -hmm. And yes. I believe that our life could be. A history of moments, a history of beautiful moments. Mm. Uh, that's what uh, we are going to end up at the end. Uh, we are not going to remember many things, but we are going to remember um, mm. um, a, a history of brief moments yes. that they really were beautiful in our life. Mm. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, especially the the beautiful moments. No, 
Um, yes. Another question. On the on the list on your biography, it says that you've done about uh, 250 exhibitions, and it stops in the in Miami. I think that seems to be the last one. So are you are you no longer doing exhibitions, or did you? Yes, I, I'm. I'm still exhibiting my work. Uh, uh, due to the COVID and pandemic uh, situation, uh, I cancelled last year an exhibition in Paris. Uh, in February, uh, another exhibition in Japan and uh, in Kanazawa, and another one in Tokyo, and oh. uh, and I and I cancel another exhibition in Miami. Now I have an exhibition here in, in Spain in my in my gallery here. Right. But uh, but definitely we intend to start um, going back to to the to the road, uh, having exhibitions around the world and. Uh, mm. And yes, I I love to go around, and uh, we have to go to India. We have to go to China, Shanghai. We have to go to New York. So sure, that would be would be on the road. <laughs> I, I guess for you the, the the COVID period must have been it must be very tough, no? Meaning that you cannot uh, you cannot travel because you've been all over the world. So. Yes, it's been uh, tough, but at the same time, I've been creating a number of projects. Uh, now I have. In the city of Malaga, we have. Um, I, I I met with the mayor and the head of the, the president of the harbor to create a museum dedicated to the history of soccer, oh. and then uh, and then it's like a, a global history of soccer are you, from are the you beginning. Soccer fan, uh, Ines, or? I love I love soccer. Really? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and but I'm not from the Barcelona. I'm from Madrid. Yeah, from yeah. The, okay. From, I forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, but I'm including in the history of soccer museum uh, over 30 sculpture, 33 to be exact, and I'm including Messi and many other, you know, Cruyff in front sure, of the country, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, and Pele, Maradona, and Ronaldo. Nice. So it's going to be a really beautiful museum right in the center of Malaga. In Malaga. And then, oh, wow. uh, yeah, yes, and then another one. I'm making a, a, a museum in in the in Ceuta, in my hometown, right on the Strait of Gibraltar, about a museum uh, to mythology and uh, Hercules. Oh, nice! And uh, and then uh, and then we have another one, which I hope that we can continue it in the United States. A museum dedicated to the history of gold uh, or the search of gold and right. how how the search of gold. Mm -hmm. um, created uh, um, uh, practically the construction of the railroad and the population of the United yeah, yeah. States. Very defining uh, moment so, in the history of the of United States. Mm -hmm. That's right. So even though I've been uh, stuck with the uh, with the pandemic, uh, I'm I'm continually creating things uh, non-stop. Yes, no, okay, so non-stop. I, I was afraid <laughs> that you had retired, but uh, you're not. You're still uh, you're still going strong. So and that's good. Yeah, I'm not going to retire. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be. I hope I can die creating. You know, creating. That's great. I have, I have yes. I, as far as the interview goes, uh, I have one, uh, one last question, because you've had a very, uh, you know, very full life. You've met many, you've seen many things and many peoples and many cultures. Is there, uh, when you look back on 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 your life, like now, this moment in life? Is there like uh, one uh, one lesson that you think that life has taught you, or? Um, yeah, that's a very simple question, but very deep. <laughs> um, I would say that um, live your life uh, um, with uh, doing what you really love to do, to be happy. Mm. Do what you really love love to do, and uh, give importance to simple things in life. Mm. We probably sometimes take for granted simple things like, uh, I don't know, our own family or own good friends or our place. And, and, uh, and, uh, and then we, are, we cannot save the world from all the problems it has, mm. but we can save our surroundings. So we can, we can be good people to our surroundings and try to, to, uh, to improve the lives of those people that they surround us, but definitely, uh, I think that the message at the end is to 
that the, the life uh, teach you a lesson, uh, which is uh, uh, about love, uh, mm. basically about love, you know, and uh, I think that love is the essence of life. Mm.